Hi everybody, Jeremy here from 3 to Studio, and today I'm gonna share with you how to get the most out of your shadow transition pack. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so once you get the pack, you will get this zip file. Just double click on it to unzip it. It will give you this folder. In the folder, you have a couple of things. You have the license, the installation instruction, and the DRFX file. You can just double click on the DRFX file to install. It will ask you if you want to install or overwrite. In my case, it's already installed, so I can just overwrite it. Then we can open DaVinci Resolve and go over to Effect, Video Transition, Video Editor Studio, and then here you will find a Shadow Transition. You have 20 different transitions you can choose from, but actually a bit more than that because some have choice to choose from top to bottom, left to right, etc. So it's actually closer to 30 transitions. Right now, I've already pre-selected a few clips in my timeline to demonstrate, so let's get right into it. Right now, if I were to try to bring something in, as you can see, there is nothing going on. It's because those clips aren't trim. You need to trim your clip ends and beginning in order to give the excess space for the transition to be able to happen. This is the case with any transition in any video editing software. Now that I've done that trimming, I can just bring my transition over my two clip and then it will be applied right here. By default, the transition would be one second, but you can always extend that duration. Now, if we take a look in the inspector, as you can see, we have a couple uh, parameters that we can control. Right here, we have the first one being control. We can choose the shape. So right now we have oval, triangle, diamond, rectangle, hexagon, and octagon. So right now let's try, for example, hexagon. And as you can see now, if we're going through the transition, the shape of that transition has changed a little bit. You can adjust the softness of that transition. So right now we cannot really uh, see the shape that well because it's very well softened, but we can make it uh, a lot harder. And now we can distinguish the shape a little more. You can also adjust the overall transparency of the shadow right here. You can adjust the color. If you want to switch it to any other color, you can do that right there. You can reset any parameter by just double clicking on it. So right now I'm just gonna reset it to black. Here you can also adjust the anamorphism, which is basically the width of that transition. So here I can just narrow that down and we are able to see the shape a lot more like that. So here we have an hexagon can switch it to a triangle. We can see that triangle shape a bit more right now, and we can rotate that shape right here. As I mentioned, you can adjust the length of transition right here, but you can also do that over there in the inspector. You can also choose the alignment. Right now, by default, it's in between the two clips, but for example, if you would like to have it only at the beginning of the clip to introduce it, we could do that as well by here dragging it in, and now that will just be a way to introduce that clip. And as you can see, if we go and select this one, right now the alignment is at the beginning instead of in between two clips. And if I were to bring here the blink at the end, as you can see, the alignment now will be at the end and not in between. All right, so now that you pretty much know our transition work inside of DaVinci Resolve, we can just go ahead and do some use cases. So my recommendation with any transition will be to make sure to have two clips that are already matching pretty well because you want the transition to help the switch between the two clips go smoother, but you don't want to force it. So if you already have like two clips that are working very well on their own, the transition will complement it nicely and it will not feel forced. In my opinion, the best transition are the one that the viewer is not noticing. So right now, as you can see, we have two clips that are already working very well together. What I would like to do is simply here, adding a pan transition to help sell that switch between the two clips. So right now we're passing behind the tree and then we're moving on to this one right here. So the movement is already matching pretty well. So we're just gonna use a transition to help us smooth that out. For this one, a transition that will work very well is the pillar left. So I'm just gonna take it and drag it here onto my clip. Right now, if I show you frame by frame how it look, we basically have a black fade in coming from the left and then helping us hiding that cut between the two clips. And in my opinion, it's looking much nicer now. Now let's move on to another one. Right now we have two clips of uh, two guys boxing. And as mentioned before, you want to take into consideration the camera movement and the action already happening in your clip to get a transition that is actually matching what's going on on screen. So right now, as you can see, we have some rotation going on with the first clip. So a rotation transition could work fairly well on this one, I think. So we're gonna go over and choose the spin control left and drag it in between our two clips. Now, if I go frame by frame, as you can see, 
the transition, in my opinion, is not happening in the right spot. I would like the transition to happen in the corner right over there, rather than on this guy right here, because the focus of the action is right here, where the strikes of the fighter are landing. To find the point that I want to move, I'm just going to move a few frames forward like so, until I see the point where the transition is happening. And then here, we're just going to adjust and move the pivot around. So I'm just going to move it slightly to the left, and then I'm just going to move it to the top right here. Now, if I'm moving frame by frame again, as you can see, now the transition is happening where the action is happening. So where the kick is landing on the fighter. So that's making a lot more sense. And in my opinion, looking much nicer. And now on top of that, we're pretty lucky because here it's reopening right where there is the flare right there, making the transition between the two clip much nicer in my opinion. Now for the next transition, we just have a live concert with someone recording the concert and then a wide shot of the concert happening. So for this one, something that is zooming out, I think could be quite interesting thing. We starting from a tight shot to something a lot wider that is including a lot more context. So something that will work well in that case will be the high risk spin zoom out in my opinion. I'm just gonna take it and drag it here again in between my two clips. Now for this one, I don't need to do anything. It seems to work fairly well on its own. But as you can see here, we have all the controls that we haven't seen in the other transition. Right now, if I move the frame one by one, as you can see, the rotation is happening from the left. And then here I could switch it for it to happen from the right instead. So there is a few transitions that have that functionality where you can easily switch either if the transition is happening left or right or top to bottom. So that's the case, for example, with something like the tilt object. If I were to replace that transition by dragging this one here, as you can see now, we have a transition going from bottom to top and we could just switch that and having it going from top to bottom. Another thing on some transition, you can adjust the in and out curve. So right now they are set up with none as in and out as bounce, but you can at any moment choose to have a different kind of animation. Lastly, one last tip, if you want to make some adjustment to the look of the transition, what I will suggest is that you just move a couple frame forward until the transition is starting to happen and you can actually see it. And then you will be able to make adjustment, for example, here, on the soft edge, on the level, and potentially, for example, here on the color. So we have a clip that is very blue right now. Maybe we can choose to have a very dark blue instead of a black, so it matched the clip a bit better. And that's pretty much it. I hope this video was helpful. Again, you can find this pack available on our website. Thank you very much for watching and have a good one. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.